Hello there, my name is Tim Held with After Later Audio, and today we are going to be talking about the Benjolin V2 from After Later Audio and Rob Hordyke. It is the latest version of the now legendary module with some very exciting new features, such as the ability to work with the Turing Machine or Allen Expanders, the Morcom and uh, Enigma, which is very, very exciting. There are also a few other improvements, such as the ability to patch in an external uh, signal into the filter section, and then there's a crossfade for uh, that filter section. Um, there is also an added 127 step mode and then a single and double rate mode. Um, this is a very dense module, so that's a lot of information I just gave you. We'll, we'll get to it, don't worry. Um, but before we do that, why don't we just take a listen to some of the sounds this thing can make? So the Benjolin V2 could actually be thought of as um, a number of different types of modules rolled into one. What makes it really, really interesting is its ability to um, have each one of these modules kind of affect each other uh, through what's called normaling. Um, so yeah, there's lots of attenuators and just different knobs that kind of can cross feed signals into the, to the next. Um, so while you can use it, as a traditional module in a lot of ways, like the oscillator or filter, or even like a random stepped voltage, um, you can really use this thing as a standalone instrument. With just this and the two expanders, you could have um, a real heyday with, uh, with just, just playing itself. So as I said a moment ago, the Benjolin V2 is made up of a couple different modules all rolled in, up into one. So let's just kind of talk about them piece by piece. Uh, let's start with the, the oscillators. There's two oscillators here. They each have a triangle output and a pulse output. They have identical controls. There is a CV um, pitch attenuator, so you can actually send external CV in to control the, uh, the frequency of these oscillators. They do not track one volt per octave, but um, this isn't that kind of module, and you'll see what that means in a moment. Um, they each have a rungler here, uh, which we'll talk about momentarily, and then I'm going to come back to these CV pitch attenuators because they do attenuate the incoming external signal. However, if there's nothing patched into them, they do have another function. Um, but let's just talk about the oscillators really quick. Uh, we have one here, there's one triangle, and then another triangle. Pretty simple. What's cool is you can see they get down into uh, LFO range. so. The Benjolin is just as fun uh, as a control voltage source as it is a, uh, uh, a voice. So let's talk about these here, CV pitch attenuators. Um, so this attenuator, if you turn this up, it actually sends the frequency from oscillator two in to control the frequency of oscillator one, and then vice versa. So you can see now there's so much cross-modulation going on, that's some pretty wild effects. So far we've only looked at the triangle outputs of the oscillator section, but um, there's also the pulse outputs. So um, here is the pulse one and two outputs together. Of course the wrangler and the cross normalization works the same way here as in the triangle outputs. So before we move on from the oscillator section, it's also fun to point out that the pulse outputs, if the frequency is low enough, can actually be used as uh, little gates. So you can trigger all sorts of stuff with this. And then um, start introducing the wrangler into this.
So here in the center is the legendary Rungler section. Um, it's kind of the engine of the Benjolin, and it's what has made so many synthesists fall in love with this module. Um, the Rungler is a stepped pattern generator that internally uses a shift register similar to the Allen or Turing machine. Um, and in its most simplified explanation, this shift register can hold eight states in either a high or low state. Um, and you can mix those eight states in creative ways and use it for sequencing, noise generation, um, or arbitrary waveform generation. And due to the normaling of, uh, of the Benjolin, the Rungler shift register ends up somewhere halfway between sequencing and noise, noise generation. So you can see here on the, uh, the oscilloscope, that we've got a pretty wild pattern going, but if you turn these these pit, the uh, frequencies down, you can see now we're getting more of a um, a standard stepped voltage that you'd use as a control source. But as you turn this up, it becomes a pretty wild noise source. So why don't we take a listen to that really quick? So first off, there are two inputs into the shift register, uh, the data to sample, and then um, which comes from oscillator one, and then there's the, uh, the clock of it, which comes from oscillator two. So at each clock tick, the shift register will record either a high or low state in one of its eight states. Uh, the Rungler DAC then converts these eight states into a stepped pattern. The length of the pattern can be controlled via the steps switch, which we will talk about in a moment, but first observe how the oscillator's frequency influence the Rungler output. So you can see that each one is changing in a little bit, right? And of course, when you start influencing, when you start cross modulating the, uh, the oscillators with each other, those are then affecting the rungler. And then of course you can then feed that rungler signal <laughs> into the oscillators. So as this is just this crazy different or this crazy feedback loop of different cross normalization. And, uh, why don't we just take a listen to what that sounds like when you, when you start doing this stuff here. That's the technical term, this stuff here. So as I stated a moment ago, the uh, there's the steps switch. So um, you can actually get up to 127 steps here. Um, so it's like a pseudo random sequence, really. So this is new to the version two of the Benjolin. And then there is the single rate or the double rate. So it's just basically you can uh, just cut your cut your uh, pattern generator the time in half or, or double it with a flip of a switch. So that's pretty fun. So continuing with the Rungler section, uh, we have the change knob here, and I'm going to explain what that does in a moment, but let's first break down this patch. I'm using, using the Rungler stepped voltage output. Um, I'm, I'm putting that into a blend so I can attenuate that a bit, um, and then sending that out into a ornament and crime to quantize the voltage and then into the one volt per octave of the knit. So let's just take a listen to what that sounds like. So what the change knob does is if you turn it fully clockwise, you can lock in a 16 step sequence. So you put it in the center position, wait till you hear something you like, once you do, turn it to the right and you're locked in and it will just repeat until you move the change knob back to the center position. Alternatively, if you turn it all the way counterclockwise, you can lock in an 8 step sequence. 
So that's what the 8 slash 16 stands for here on this switch. So to the left, or counterclockwise, 8 step sequence, to the right, or clockwise, a 16 step sequence. Okay, let's talk about the PWM output. This is basically just the output of the comparator between oscillator 1 and oscillator 2, and it results in a square wave of variable width. So just notice what happens when I start turning up the frequencies of these two oscillators. So there we have a square wave. And notice how that width starts varying as I move these frequencies around. So like many other things on the pendulum, you can get pretty wacky. All right, let's talk about the filter section here on the Benjolin V2. The, um, the output of the PWM is normal to the input of the filter. So as we turn this frequency up here, we'll see that that variable square wave that we played with a second ago is now being passed through the filter. The filter has a low pass, a band pass, and a high pass output that can all be used at the same time, of course. Um, like any good filter, it's got the ability to patch in external CV to control the frequency. And of course, there's a resonance knob. What's new about the version 2 is the ability to patch in an external source into the filter um, and then crossfade between the PWM and the external signal. So there's the PWM all the way clockwise. Counterclockwise is all just the external signal and then of course the crossfade can blend the two. And then finally, we can send the Rungler stepped voltage out into the frequency of the filter. So let's get the self resonating here and then feed that Rungler into the frequency. All right, let's move on to the CV inputs on the Benjolin V2. First off, there is the clock. So if we get this going again, we know that the Rungler is, um, the speed of the Rungler is set by the frequency of oscillator two. However, you can stop that by sending a, a gate or a trigger into the clock CV input. So I'm just clocking this with the end of fall output of the the tilt here. And then the rate CV input. 
to get a... Just goes from single to double every time you send it a, a gate or a trigger. And then same uh, same concept in the steps. It'll just toggle between the 127 or the 816 modes, which is kind of hard to pick up because um, it's hard to lock onto the uh, the sequence of 127 steps. But that's what that does. Okay, let's really quickly cover the Morcom and the Enigma expanders uh, for the Pendulum V2. But before we do that, let's just let's just show them off a little bit. So what's really fun about the Benjolin V2 is its ability to work with the Turing machine expanders. So here we have the Enigma and the Morcom. Uh, the Enigma is a smaller version of the Volts Turing machine expander, and the Morcom is a smaller version of the Pulses Turing machine expander. Um, of course, these two still work with the Allen or Turing machine, but also work with the Benjolin. The Enigma enables you to manipulate the CV sequence um, so you can create a different yet related sequence to the main Rungler output. And then the Morcom expander is a way for you to get seven random outputs and then four that are derived from the other seven outputs. Um, so for example, when one and two are high, then the one plus two output is high. Um, you can get some really great rhythmic effects using all of these uh, in conjunction with the main stepped CV output. So the Rungler and then of course adding the Enigma to that. That's what I was doing in that last patch that you were just looking at. All right, so that's the Benjolin V2. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you would like any more information, please head over to afterlateraudio.com.